What's going on? I'm Larry Hoover Jr. and I'm rocking with Street Certified News. What's your boy L. Hitter, Mr. All Yeah, y'all already know what it is, man. I'm rocking with Street Certified News. We got behind the scenes, man. We're gonna tie this bitch up. What up, this is your boy Bum J. We rocking with Street Certified News. He's that great. Yeah, Street Certified News, man. Shout out Big Bo. Shout out Walker. Street Certified, man. In the streets of Chicago in the 1940s, the world was changing. Increased racial tensions were growing. And with the approval of the construction of the Dan Ryan Expressway, neighborhoods in its path were beginning to be uprooted, causing them to slowly begin changing from majority white residents into black. Born in Chicago, Illinois in 1945, into a family who held power in the streets on both the south and west sides of the city, Henry Mickey Cogwell was soon growing to a man, bridging the financial gap from the outfit losing those neighborhoods. And after his untimely death in 1977, the gang started by his family would change their name to forever honor his legacy. This is the story of Mickey Cogwell, gangster from Chicago, leader of the Egyptian Cobras and the Cobra Stones, connected to the Italian Mafia and united with the People's Nation. Some would say he was eventually set up by his allies, looking to hold on to their own dwindling power. Henry Mickey Cogwell was born into an already powerful family in Chicago, Illinois. When Mickey was only a young boy, the Egyptian Cobras were formed on Chicago's west side by a man named James Cogwell. Although some claim that James was Henry's father, it has also been reported that James was most likely Henry's uncle. During the 1950s, the Egyptian Cobras would fight heavily with a gang called the 14th Street Clovers, a gang that would later become the Vice Lords. Originally from the North Lawndale area of Chicago, but closer to the near west side, the Egyptian Cobras led by the Cogwells would hold territory as far east as Halstead and Maxwell Street, making a name as one of Chicago's most powerful black organizations. By 1960, however, and after the Clovers swelled in numbers, and would change their name to the Vice Lords, the Egyptian Cobras sought better opportunities further south when James relocated the gang to the Fuller Park community. Although some Cobras stayed on the west side, after the move south, the west side Cobras effectively became their own entity. In 1962, a now 17-year-old Henry Cogwell would be handed over the leadership of the south side faction of the Cobras by James. Henry would go on to lead the Egyptian King Cobras as they now gained a foothold and a new reputation on the south side of Chicago. It was also during this time that Mickey would, likely due to his long-standing family ties, be granted access to doing business with the Chicago Outfit, a faction of the Italian Mafia that held Chicago as its main territory. Some would say that the Outfit sought out specific black partners due to the loss of massive amounts of territory after white flight from those south and west side communities now led by the new street gangs like the Cobras, Vice Lords, Devil Disciples, and Black Peastone Rangers. By 1966, Henry Mickey Cogwell now held the second position in the main 21 alliance, comprising the leaders of a number of those new street gangs. Mickey Cogwell along with his Cobras would eventually form a close alliance with the Black Peastone Nation and their leader Jeff Fort and would officially change their name to the Cobra Stones in that same year. In 1970, the commander of the gang intelligence unit for Chicago Police Department portrayed Mickey Cogwell as the direct link between the gangs and organized crime, particularly that Chicago outfit. Throughout the early 1970s and after the high profile murders and arrests of a number of Chicago's gang leaders, Henry Mickey Cogwell will operate his Cobra organization in relative peace, 
bringing in massive amounts of money to the outfit through drug sales, gambling, and prostitution. However, in 1976, after being released from prison and converting to Islam, Black Peacestone leader Jeff Fort would change the name of his gang to El Rukin and force all allied with him to also convert. Being as powerful as Fort in his own right by this time, Mickey Cogwell, having successfully ran his organization while Fort was in federal Sadly, on February 25th, 1977, Henry Mickey Cogwell was shot and killed on the south side of Chicago. Immediately after the killing, rumors would begin to swirl about Jeff Fort having a hand in Mickey's death because he did not want to become an El Rukin, while others blamed his dealings with the Chicago outfit. The Cobras organization would officially change their name again, becoming the Mickey Cobras in his honor. For the following decades, the Mickey Cobras would hold power mainly on the low end, but also on the west side, near north side, and the south suburbs of Chicago. On April 5th, 2005, U.S. Attorney Patrick J. Fitzgerald described the Mickey Cobras as few in numbers compared to other parties with the same power but as one of Chicago's several super gangs. From Fuller Park, to the Robert Taylors, to Cabrini Green, to the present day Snakes, Mickey Cogwell's name will forever ring bills. King of the Snakes, gangster from Chicago, leader of the Cobras, and now forever memorialized in the streets he once called home. It's your boy Emrick Sel Guapo, Street Certified News, the street's most reputable source for urban media. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to see more original content like this. We out.